Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'll be yet again packing away my watercolors and I'll be painting a Ghibli scene with gouache. I wanted to paint something that's a bit more painterly and I love garden or nature scenes from Ghibli so I decided to take a scene from The Secret Life of Arietti where Shaw is lying down in the field with wildflowers surrounding him and I knew that this was going to be a hard task so I made sure to clean my table first to get in the mood of painting and I also made sure to prep some snacks before I paint so I got myself a strawberry and homemade yogurt smoothie with manuka honey and some roasted nuts. It's been a while since I've drawn figures and I'm really in need of a lot of practice in this department so I made sure to start lightly with pencil so I can erase whenever I need to. Like every Ghibli movie, I love the artistry of this, both in the simplification and exaggeration of certain elements. Story-wise, I think Ghibli films just give you this warm fuzzy feelings but story isn't something that I look for when I watch Ghibli films. For me, it's mostly about the artwork and music, which creates such a wholesome atmosphere, in my opinion. So there has been a lot of these types of videos going around, and I decided to jump into the bandwagon and use this as an opportunity to exercise and use my gouache paints, because I do really need a lot of practice with it still. Plus, a lot of the Ghibli backgrounds were painted with poster colors, which is similar to gouache, so I thought that this will be the perfect opportunity to use gouache again. So that's what I'm going to basically be talking about in this video. I'm going to share with you my experience with gouache so far and what I've learned from painting this, what's different, what I had difficulties with, and things like that. So I might be talking a lot, I might not, who knows, but I'll try not to. And if you're one of those people who finds me talking too much or my voice is too low and annoying to listen to, feel free to just mute this video and put your own background music to relax too. So before this, the last time I used gouache was for something that was more of an impressionist or abstract painting like the cloud painting and the park scene so I didn't really need too much accuracy for my color mixes as well as shapes since I was just painting my own loose interpretation with reference images and I usually follow photos and I just simplify it my own way and things like that but this time, because I am working and copying from an actual artwork, I actually forgot that feeling and I did not realize that it was going to be this tough because I do need the accuracy of the colors and the textures and things like that. But this is also why this exercise is very good practice for me personally, even though I didn't end up copying exactly due to the limited space I had, I ended up leaving parts of the details on the flowers. I knew that I wasn't going to copy completely because at the same time, I don't want to spend too much time. This piece took me around six to seven hours to complete already. Even if the painting doesn't look like much from here, there were a lot of color mixing involved, which for me was the hardest or one of the hardest because I had to think the opposite way to what I'm used to compared to how I use watercolors anyway. On top of this, I also had no game plan when I tackled this painting in terms of planning the layers because I didn't have enough knowledge about the medium and how opaque they were. 
With watercolors, paint always dries much lighter and this was also something that I had to get used to when I started getting serious with watercolors but this time the paint dries much darker when it dries so even if some paints look milky while I mix them in my palette with the other colors it dries much darker this wasn't much of a problem for me before, but because I am working from a reference which pushes me to look for accurate color mixes, that's when I realize how far I can be from certain colors, and I think that was definitely a learning curve that I would still need to get used to, especially when it comes to the characters, because skin tone and the colors of the clothes, since they're flat, I did try to get them as accurate as I could. There's also a large range in terms of transparency and opacity with gouache and I didn't think I took advantage of the transparent stage enough. In terms of the colors, I already knew that it's not 100% opaque so how I went about this is I painted the background while leaving some space for flowers and things like that, at least for the larger ones. But ideally, I would prefer to be able to paint all of the background first and then a new layer for the flowers. But I avoided this because I knew that the color would not be as vibrant. But this way of approaching means that I had to somewhat work twice because I had to paint the flower and then clean the edges again. At the same time, I found out that different whites have different opacities so I originally bought gouache the first time when I was in uni and I used permanent white which was the color that we were told to get and not too long ago I bought a set of gouache which had zinc white and this white is not as opaque as permanent white but I only found out towards the end and I realized this because I thought by adding white into certain color mixes it would make it more opaque since I was used to the permanent white and this was the method that I intentionally went for when I wanted to clean the edges of the flowers for the second or the last layer to clean the edges between the background and the flowers. When I was doing this, I realized that one of the whites weren't opaque enough for me to paint on top of because it would never be as bright as me just painting on top of white paper. But at the same time, I also realized that one of the whites on my palette, which I didn't realize was the permanent white, had a bit more opacity. So this is something that I tried to experiment with when I realized that those two whites work differently. So towards the end, there were small flowers that were just too small for me to leave out negative spaces for. And I used the permanent white as an underpaint on top of the background, but I used the permanent white underneath before adding any other colors for the flower. And I think that worked out much better than just adding white into the color mixes and painting on top of the background because the white is no longer as opaque since it's been compromised when I mix the white with the other colors, which are a bit more transparent. So that might be something that I should look into a bit more if I ever paint something similar to this but I still find that the color is still not as vibrant than just painting straight on white paper. Well that was a bit hard to explain. I'm sorry if the information was all over the place but hopefully that information was useful for you. It was probably the most interesting discovery that I found out about while painting this and I thought that it's something that is worthwhile to share. I do want to explore gouache a bit more, but I also realized that I'm running out of permanent white and I can't find it anywhere in my local shop here, so that's fun. I'll just have to find a way to find another one or if any of you have any suggestion for an opaque white gouache that you use, I would really greatly appreciate it if you list them in the comment section. Anyway, I'm finally going to stop talking and I'll let you guys enjoy some peace and soft music to go with this painting.
So I'm almost done here. I realized that he doesn't have a chin or doesn't have enough of a chin and I also spelled Ariety wrong towards the end. It's supposed to be double T. Yes, before someone points that out in the comment section, but despite the mistakes, I really enjoyed painting this because I learned something new and made some interesting discoveries for myself that I wish to explore on further in the future with gouache, with my own painting or with more Ghibli scenes. But maybe next time I should do something simpler than this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this painting and hopefully the information was also useful for you. Like usual, all of the list of tools as well as my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!